this is a very fast moving agenda. And although there are a lot of people now in the real estate sector writ large in the built environment who've got their heads around the kind of climate risk story, I still don't think many of them understand just how fast this is going to bear down on their conventional business models. And I gave a couple of examples in my talk here. One was about the impact of changing insurance markets in those parts of the world that are now very heavily affected by climate disasters of one kind or another, where you've got more and more people saying, well, sorry, we're not going to be able to provide the usual cover that we've done in the past because the exposures are far too high for us to deal with. And you think about how that trickles through the whole real estate world. I mean, the real estate world depends on insurance. There is no real estate sector without insurance. So for me, one of the things that people in, this, in the ULI and elsewhere are going to have to do is just understand the speed of change. They've got some fantastic materials to share with members now, but really get their heads around the speed of change. I helped set up my organization, Forum for the Future, 30 years ago. There wasn't a lot of this going on 30 years ago. So am I pleased to see the changes? Yes, of course. I still find it very frustrating because the rules of the game that define what companies can or can't do still militate against full-on sustainability. They still have to do the numbers first and foremost. They still have to meet their fiduciary responsibilities. They still have to put shareholder first perspectives in everything they do. And sustainability is still very much a second order in terms of those priorities for companies. So even the ones that are doing really well they are still fighting against a system that essentially wants to promote the old world of economic growth at any cost rather than the new world where we're creating wealth on a much more sustainable regenerative basis which would actually give better returns for shareholders over time. So it is frustrating still. I've just been thinking about this whole challenge for the real estate market in southern Europe because the Mediterranean is on the receiving end now of a higher degree of climate disruption than almost any other part of the world, oddly enough, apart from the Arctic and the Antarctic. But the Mediterranean is right there now. We're seeing average temperature increases that are scary. We're seeing an increase in the number of days with very high temperatures, wildfires, droughts, floods, the whole lot. I mean, everything is chucked at the Mediterranean one way or another, both southern Europe and North Africa, of course. For the built environment, that could look as in a 100% nightmare scenario. But if you think about it, what it actually does is to strengthen the case for adapting much, much faster to very different climatic conditions, putting the emphasis on, for me in particular, the existing asset base. So all the kind of, not just um, domestic, but also offices, retail, etc., and working through the investment propositions to bring those existing assets up to a much, much more resilient state than most buildings are in at the moment. There are huge opportunities in that. Because if you can do that with your existing portfolios, occupiers are going to be pretty happy, frankly, because they will know that they are better protected against some of the changes coming down the track at them.